Okay, fight fans, fight fiends, welcome back to Manny's Thoughts. I, of course, Manny MTL or Manny Montreal. Make sure to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and obviously, thefightcity.com. As usual, I'll give you guys my thoughts on what's going down in the world of combat sports. Let's get started. Okay, fight fans, before I get to some of the negative news and some of the local news, I do want to make some quick congratulations. First off, congratulations to Santa Cruz and Frampton. Fantastic fight. I am so happy we are getting a trilogy. Look into Berchelt versus Vargas. That was one hell of a fight. Vargas needs to get something from HBO. I don't know, like maybe they can give him some sort of honorary job. The guy has done a fantastic job of making them look good. Uh, every time they put him in the ring, it is a fantastic show. Win or lose, Vargas is a true warrior. Berchelt is now a... Uh, Berchez? Ber Berchelt? I'm not even sure how you say his last name. But uh, that definitely puts him up there. Uh, that was a very big win for him. And I'm um, very happy for him. As far as the UFC is concerned, I was shocked. Both Pena and Cowboy Cerrone lost. Cowboy Cerrone, I just, you know, I talked about it with some people and I personally feel he's been a little too active. Every time this happens to him, he goes on this crazy streak and then, you know, loses. Uh, that's not taking anything away from Masvidal. Uh, wow, wow. When you consider the people that Cerrone beat and then the fashion that Masvidal beat up Cerrone, whoa, great stuff. Okay, so now as far as the local news, obviously everybody's going to be talking ice buckets and stupidity. Um, I will say this, both fighters have some very young, passionate fans. And uh, I've been to some hockey games where I've seen Boston or Toronto fans get into full-on fistfights with Canadian fans. It's not something shockingly new. It was a little different that it happened in the VIP area. The Eye of the Tiger team deserves kudos for putting on a hell of a gala. I really like the whole ambiance of the place. They had these drum dudes uh, instead of, you know, the usual dancing girls, which are, uh, to be honest, completely pointless. And, uh, you know, instead of the DJ just blaring loud, annoying music, it was, you know, some real ambiance. It felt like something was going on. And then on top of that, just like in the States, uh, they were doing, you know, little contests and giveaways. There was an MC. There was like an old school crooner. It was a really, really great show. Batir Jukambayev, Ablek Kusenov, Matsu Jitan Germain, Eve Ulysses, Simon Keen, Ayaz Hussein all put on great performances. It was a fantastic night of fights. Even the Brandon Cook Butler fight was very good and it was closer than most people thought. Now for everyone that's thinking Butler's done and oh Cook's a monster and Cook's the best, you need to calm down on yourselves because although it wasn't a lucky punch, take a real good look at Brendan Cook's face. That was not an easy night's work and I don't want anyone to pretend it was. That being said, all the shenanigans afterwards, it's going to get fixed and uh, it's regrettable. As far as people complaining about Stephen Butler or saying I'm soft on the kid and I should be harder on him for his actions afterwards, I say this. The kid basically got out of a car accident and you're asking him to give you the square root of pi. He had no idea where he is. Proof of that in my mind is when the bucket actually hits Cook in the face, Butler has a zero reaction. Like flying buckets are an everyday thing in boxing. So I really don't think Butler was all there. I think the weight cut was a major problem. I think the thing that I reported that now all the other media sites are reporting, that he got injured during his training camp played a major factor in his camp. I think the weight cut was too grueling for him. And uh, I don't think he's done. He's 21, everyone. He's 21. You need to calm down. These things happen. This is the game. This is boxing. If the kid doesn't come back stronger, then he didn't belong to in the first place. That's the bottom line. Now, will he? That's on him. As far as what I think they should do promotion-wise in order to fix some problems, 
Number one, maybe pay attention to who's buying your VIP tickets. Number two, maybe not have glass products and heavy buckets at the tables. Now, table service is expensive, but it can save lives, I guess. If you think about the fact that David Lemure almost caught a bottle to the head, that two seats over to him, some lady got beamed. You know, you start thinking about the what ifs. Like, what if some loser would have cost us David Lemure in March? I don't even want to think about it. I have some friends who are security guards who were at the event, and they got into full-on fist fights with some of Brendan Cook's boys. So it's not like this is all Butler's crew. People were drinking. Uh, they're young. And there was an obvious rivalry set. In the future, we'll just put the Ontario people on one side of the Bell Centre and the Quebec people on the other side of the Bell Centre. Here's another thing. Somebody please tell me what an Ontario flag looks like. I get that you want to make Stephen Butler a Quebec star. But I urge you to look at the bigger picture. This was a fight for dominance in Canada and not in La Belle Province. So maybe some Canadian flags would have gone a little further for marketing. I mean, personally, I think that these same Quebecois fans are now not even caring about Stephen Butler. Because the truth is, most of these, uh, you know, fly-by-night fans are only there because the flag is waving. I don't want to get all political and dive into all that stupidity that is my beautiful province and city. So we're going to move on. The other thing I want to mention is maybe Camilla Stefan should invest in moving Stephen Butler out of the hood. Being from a rough neighborhood myself and having had friends who got into trouble, and not myself, but friends, um, I understand it's tough and you want to be loyal and these are the people that were there for you when no one else was. Look into some stuff about growing, how some of these things are inevitable. If they can't keep up with you, kiddo, then they don't belong to be in your circle. All your friends should have been on their best behavior, no matter the outcome. Hopefully, that'll be the case for your future fights. Camille Stefan needs to move you out of the hood, help you get a house somewhere in Laval, or Brossard, or the West Island. Just away. Maybe your next camp, as much as it pains me to say this, because I understand people want to be around their families, and he's just starting one, but maybe for his next camp, a little away time would do the trick. Now, as far as what his future holds, you know, here's hoping they rebuild him slow and they do the right thing. I personally think it was a good stoppage on the ref's part. And uh, I'm happy he's going to be able to get back to the drawing board, try and iron out the mistakes he made. As for Brendan Cook, a lot of people are calling for Francis Lafreniere to move down and face Brendan Cook. Personally, I don't see that happening, and I kind of want Francis to make his own way. He's on the precipice of getting some really big fights, so I really hope it pans out for Francis Lafreniere. But for Brandon Cook, may I offer a suggestion? None other than the Plaid Army itself, Brendan Brewer. It would be one hell of a fight, East Coast versus, well, Ontario. Now, you know, we're aware that in Ontario the drinking age is a little higher and, well, I think we understand why that is now. And I guess since they don't have beautiful women in Ontario, they're not used to all the action here in Montreal. So maybe we'll do it in some neutral ground for these guys. But uh, Brendan Brewer versus Cook would be a beautiful fight. Both guys undefeated. And this could be a chance to really see who the number one guy in Canada really is. That is, of course, unless Brendan Cook doesn't get a bigger offer, uh, you know, something along the lines of a Lara or, you know, who knows, maybe something else. But here's looking forward to what United Promotions gets to do with that now, sitting in the driver's seat for once, Brendan Cook. Congratulations. As far as the news is concerned, there is a lot going on in the Fight City. As you know, we are coming up on a fight card at the Casino de Montréal, headlined by none other than the Canadian champ, Shaquille Finn, the Jamaican juggernaut. Uh, personally, I'm looking forward for this fight. It's going to be a good one. Make sure to get your tickets now. 
Hit up the link in the description. You'll be able to buy your tickets on there. Uh, they go quick. There's only 600 seats in the venue and Shaq does really well with ticket sales. So be quick about it. There's only about nine or 10 days left until Shaq's fight. Now, as far as uh, other news, well, a little more internationally, a little bit of bad news for Oscar De La Hoya. Uh, looks like he's gonna be going back to rehab. Got himself arrested for driving under the influence on the very same day that his $400 million lawsuit against Al Heyman fell through. Here's hoping he wasn't spending that money and he gets back on track. I feel bad for him because only days before that, all the media was talking about how well Golden Boy was doing. That's it for me this week. If you guys like the t-shirts, if you like Shaq's t-shirts, if you like any of the t-shirts or the hats or whatnot, don't be shy. Hit me up. I'll make sure you get one. Like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. I'll see you guys next week.